Hello there, welcome to part 15 of my Clone Wars analysis series. In today's video we'll be examining Trespass, Season 1, Episode 15. The goal of this series is to unpack the Clone Wars animated show and look closely at its themes, characters, and politics. As always, there will be spoilers as we're covering the entire episode and series. That said, let's jump into it. After the last two arcs, which each consisted of two episode narratives, we have Trespass, which is a standalone episode in terms of characters and plot. It scales the plot back away from the Separatists and big character names such as Grievous and Dooku. Instead of focusing on the intergalactic Clone War conflict where the Jedi are soldiers and generals, this episode zooms in on a localized planetary conflict within the Republic, in a way that is more reminiscent of the Jedi as peacekeepers and negotiators. If it wasn't for Palpatine's created war, it's assumable that the Jedi would be doing a lot more of situations like we see in Trespass, where different planetary civilizations don't like each other and require an outside negotiator. The quote for the episode is, Arrogance diminishes wisdom. The quote obviously highlights the dangers of ego and arrogance. Arrogance is synonymous with overconfidence, which I would say is the strongest weakness of Star Wars villains, and Luke famously calls out the Emperor for it in the throne room. This episodic quote is also reminiscent of the tragedy of Darth Pelagius the Wise. He is inherently full of wisdom and power, but is too short-sighted to prevent his own demise. In the context of this particular episode, the quote relates to Chairman Cho, the arrogant and short-sighted leader of Pantora, who is so rooted in ego about himself and Pantora that he forsakes judgment and creates his own demise. The opening narration of the episode explains that there was a Republic base on the snow planet of Orto Plutonia. I'd infer that this small base was similar to the one we see on the Rishi Moon from Rookies, as it's a surveillance and communications base for the sector to alert nearby systems if there is trouble. This assumption is pretty much correct as within a minute we meet Chairman Cho of Pantora, the nearby moon, who says that he asked the Senate for their public troops to be here in the first place. As we see throughout the episode, he's paranoid about the Separatists attacking his homeworld. This paranoia may be somewhat justifiable as it is later revealed that the Separatists do indeed have a base on Orto Plutonia. However, his desire to protect his people ultimately leaves him blind to what is really happening in the world. The narration explains that the clone force at this base disappeared, and that the base will now be investigated by Anakin, Obi-Wan, the aforementioned chairman, and Senator Chuchi of Pandora. Immediately, Chairman Cho is depicted as a self-centered and conceited individual. Obi-Wan warns the diplomats to be careful until the base is secured, which makes a lot of sense. If a whole clone force of the Republic base is gone, then the area can be presumed to be dangerous. However, Cho doesn't like when people tell him what to do. The position of leader of Pantora has gotten to his head, and throughout the whole episode, he just flaunts his ego and contradicts whatever people tell him. He says, I will go where I choose, and that this wasteland belongs to us. In addition to revealing his egotistical personality, we get some insights to his thought process about the snow planet and his moon, Pantora. As Orto Plutonia is uninhabited, he expresses that it belongs to him, as his world is the closest civilized world nearby. Ultimately, we will learn that this world isn't uninhabited, and actually has a group of Talls, which you may remember from the cantina scene in A New Hope. By thinking of the snowy planet as a wasteland, Chairman Cho is showing that he isn't worthy to own it in the way that he desires to. Senator Chuchi, a young woman, is much more aware than the Chairman, and instead of basing her assessment on her feelings of ownership, she explains to the Jedi that by Republic laws, Pantor is the lawful protectorate of the uninhabited Orto Plutonia, basing her assessment more on logic. Upon entering the abandoned Republic base, the characters encounter clone helmets on spikes. The chairman is confident that it is the work of the Separatists and is paranoid about them attacking Pantora immediately. He's confident that they're building a forward base. Obi-Wan is more perceptive than the chairman, knowing that the droids don't put helmets on spikes, and more importantly, that the computers in the base haven't been touched. I think it's safe to assume that the Talls aren't technologically equipped or literate, so they would have no reason to use the computers. A parallel between this episode and the last arc would be the Lerman colony and now the native tall species. Separatist leader Locke Durd looked down upon the entire Lerman population, and we analyze that their lack of technology makes it easy for him to view them as inferior. In the same way, the chairman of Pantora will encounter the Talls and find them to be unintelligent and unworthy, partially based on their lack of technology. Rex informs everyone that a droid bases across the ridge, which confirms the chairman's suspicions about Separatist footing in the system. The Jedi go to investigate, and droid heads are on spikes at their base as well. Anakin is able to put two and two together and infer that whatever attacked the Republic also attacked the Separatists. Not having a footing in the intergalactic conflict of the Clone War, the native Talls don't discriminate or pick a side. They simply want their territory and home to be theirs. In the Separatist base, the Jedi find a hologram recording of a droid being attacked, which then gives them a clue on where to find the Talls. Back at the Republic base, Chairman Cho is ordering everyone around. He says, I want the weapon system back online and the shields operational, which helps us understand the role of this Republic base as a defensive point in the system, and Cho continually questions what the Separatists are planning. 
Senator Chuchi questions his certainty of the Separatists and explains that there are no fallen droids in the base as well as no blast marks on the walls. Her points are perceptive and quite wise. As the quote of the episode illustrates, the chairman's arrogance diminishes his wisdom and he can't see it. He sarcastically asks her if she's an expert on war and belittles her status as senator by saying, I have led our people before you were born. I don't know exactly how much power Cho has, but he's had his position for a long time, and that could be explainable for why he's so self-centered. He's claiming that he's worried about Pantora and its people's safety, and is worried about whatever aggressive enemies come its way, but we could also assume that he wants this planet for himself, to increase the scale of his jurisdiction, influence, and self-importance. To Senator Chuchi, he says, I will fight and die for my people. It's time to ask yourself, will you do the same? This line to the senator is important, and representative of war. The chairman will not hesitate to declare war on the Tals later in the episode and does so because he thinks violence is the only answer to protecting his people. He looks down on Chuchi for not having the same view as him. In the conclusion of the episode, Chuchi reflects on these words spoken to her now and declares that she doesn't want to die for her people. She wants to live, and living requires peaceful negotiations, which are something that the chairman never thought of. The chairman's words of dying for his people also possess a level of irony as he does die in the episode. When encountering the Talls for the first time, Anakin is on edge and Obi-Wan has to tell him not to provoke them. The Jedi are able to perceive that the Talls aren't inherently hostile and just want their territory to themselves. Anakin also assumes that he won't be able to communicate with the Talls, but Obi-Wan says they might be smarter than we are. Obi-Wan's statement is more humble and more open-minded compared to the selfish and closed perception of the Chairman. Just because the species doesn't have technology, like the Lerman, doesn't mean that they can be written off. The Jedi make peace and plan a meeting between the Talls and Pantorans to negotiate. When told that the planet is inhabited, the chairman says impossible and boasts Pantora's history and their great explorer to examine this planet in the years prior. He remains confident that no one lives here and claims that the natives are trespassers on his land. The title trespass has dual meanings. The chairman's perception is that he owns this planet and the natives are on his Pantoran property. The other meaning, and the true one, is that the Republic, Separatists, and Pantora are all trespassing on Tall land. Obi-Wan confirms that the Talls may very well be older as a species than Pantora as a civilization, making the Pantorans the real trespassers the title speaks of. Chairman Cho says, Whoever they are, they belong to us. This whole system belongs to us. His ego is immense and he has a bloated sense of ownership when it comes to not just the planet, but to the people too. Chuchi argues that the Senate has to decide jurisdiction when it comes to life forms, but Cho calls them savages. Instead of wanting diplomacy like Obi-Wan, the chairman wants conflict and says, they are little more than animals, which is a really extreme statement. This reminds me of earlier episodes where Plo Koon valued each individual life, and Grievous was foiled as not valuing others' lives at all. Obi-Wan later tells Cho that he doesn't trust the Talls, and that the Talls don't trust him either. I think it's a great line because trust is a two-way street, and both parties have to be in agreement for things to work. The Talls are ready to negotiate, but with the Chairman's hostility and distrust, this negotiation quickly fades. The Talls welcome the Pantorans as neighbors in the system, but again express their wish to have their planet and home to themselves. The chairman points his hand on their leader's face and calls him a savage, while referring to himself as the exalted ruler of Pantora, and how he won't take orders from anyone. Just like with Obi-Wan at the beginning of the episode, Cho simply doesn't like being told to do anything, and this is because he is the ruler of a planet and never does have to be told what to do at all. The situation becomes an internal affair for Pantora, and war is declared. Chairman Cho, despite being a dickhead, has to be protected by the Republic so the clones go with him. Cho is going to attack the Talls and orders the clones to do so. I believe this is the first time Rex questions an order, as he knows it's morally wrong. He will question General Krell later on, but even this early on, he's shown as not being a blind soldier. He reaffirms that he's just there to protect the Chairman, but knows that he shouldn't be attacking the Talls. When the Talls attack the clone force and effectively combat them because it's their home snow terrain, Rex calls for a retreat after many casualties. The chairman says he can't retreat to these animals right as his second bodyguard gets impaled by a throwing spear, and moments later the chairman himself is injured and the clone force has to retreat anyway. Chushi gets the legal right to negotiate on behalf of Pantora after other officials from the planet deem the chairman to be out of line. Chuchi wants the Jedi to negotiate peace for her, partially because she is afraid to do so for herself, but Obi-Wan explains that it isn't the Jedi that are at war with the Talls, but Pantora. If true peace is to come out of the situation, then the situation must be resolved by the sides within it, not outsiders. The Jedi are supposed to be peacekeepers, and this form of peacekeeping is their standard practice as mediators of conflict. The war and soldier lifestyle that we see in most of the episodes of the Clone Wars is the game that Palpatine wants them to be playing. Chuchi and the Tall leader negotiate peace after a climactic battle. 
Earlier, the chairman told her that he would die for his people and that Chushu would have to question if she would do that herself. To the tall leader, she says, to die for one's people, a great sacrifice. To live for one's people, an even greater sacrifice. I choose to live for my people. War is a great sacrifice. To defend one's home through violence is honorable. The talls were defending their home. However, the chairman was an aggressor, which isn't honorable. He had the peace of his people in mind, which is noble, but he went about it in the wrong way. Chuchi isn't saying that peaceful diplomacy is more honorable than war, but it is harder and more difficult to do. Diplomacy is a different strand of noble. It reminds me of Yoda saying that the dark side is the quick and easy path, and in this instance war is the easier choice than settling things with a neighboring enemy. The chairman tried to do the quick resolution of violence and it cost him his life. Chuchi recognizes the sovereignty of the Tals and calls them a free and equal people, which is starkly contrasted by when the chairman saw them as animals. At the conclusion of the episode, Obi-Wan tells the senator that now that they have peace, to make it last. What Chuchi said about living for one's people is true, but being able to do so forever is very difficult as problems between peoples will arise and war may be tempting. Obi-Wan says to be an example to others that all wars can come to an end, which comes as a moral message for the audience in our own real world, but also in context of the story so that one day the Clone War can end peacefully as well. As for the Tall and the Cantina, I'd say it's safe to assume that the species was able to get off-world and disperse over the two decades or so until A New Hope. This episode briefly examines Republic laws when it comes to inhabited systems and life in the universe, as well as the political idea of sovereignty. As far as the Star Wars story indicates, the Empire doesn't respect sovereignty and their laws will only benefit themselves, not the species of the various systems within it. With that in mind, the Tall's likely dispersed a few years after this episode. Before we conclude, I would like to address the legitimacy of Chairman Cho's anxiety over the Separatists. While he's an aggressive and conceited villain, his main belief was that Pantora was in danger, and as its ruler, it was his duty to protect his people. Much of his anxiety over the Separatists was channeled into a blind rage at the native Tall's. As we've seen from the Separatist base on Orto Plutonia, there was some reason for him to be worried for his homeworld. Pantoran politics aren't addressed in the Clone Wars again until Sphere of Influence, an episode in Season 3. In this episode, Pantora is blocked by the Trade Federation, similarly to how Naboo is in The Phantom Menace. This is mainly a political push to get Pantora to join the Separatist movement, and in the addition to the blockade, the new chairman's daughters are kidnapped. The Separatists, without a doubt, have some interest in Pantora, so perhaps Chairman Cho's concerns weren't as paranoid as one might think, but it is inarguable that he was blindly aggressive toward the tall inhabitants and basically created his own demise.